in today's lecture we will be discussing about autoimmune diseases our objectives for today's class is to define the term immunological tolerance to describe the factors leading to autoimmunity to describe the mechanism of systemic lupus erythematosus an example of systemic autoimmune disorder to describe organ specific autoimmune disorders such as jogren syndrome scleroderma polyarthritis nodosa hashimotos disease and polymyositis dermatomyositis what is immunological tolerance immunological tolerance is unresponsiveness to self antigen failure of immunological tolerance leads to autoimmune disorders immunological tolerance is of two types central tolerance and peripheral tolerance basically it is our own body cells not acting against our own antigens that is called as immunological tolerance coming to central tolerance here the immature lymphocytes that recognize self antigens in the central generative lymphoid organs such as thymus are killed by apoptosis apoptosis is programmed cell death some of the self reactive b lymphocytes switch to new antigen receptors that are not self reactive the above mechanism is not full proof thus some cells may slip into the periphery so what happens to the cells which slip into the periphery they are handled by the peripheral tolerance so in central tolerance the cells are deleted or destroyed which ones the self antigens the cells which have the self antigen the lymphocyte having the self antigens are deleted as well as they are taught or mentored to become tolerant and what happens if it slips into the periphery we have peripheral tolerance the self reactive cells which have escaped the thymus can still be neutralized in the periphery by the following mechanisms energy this is functional inactivation of lymphocytes induced by encounter with antigens under certain circumstances there is functional inactivation that's the key word here there is suppression by regulatory t cells activation induced cell death apoptosis involving death receptors fas so in peripheral tolerance the cells are the key word here is energy or deletion of lymphocytes that recognize self antigens in peripheral tissue energy is functional inactivation what are the factors that lead to a failure of self tolerance and the development of autoimmunity so failure of self tolerance leads to autoimmunity first is genetic factors second is infections coming to genetic factors it has been noticed that autoimmune diseases run in families several autoimmune diseases are linked with hla alleles inheritance of susceptibility genes that may disrupt the different tolerance pathways these are the three mechanisms so here we can see how the genes are associated with different autoimmune diseases what is the role of infection in autoimmunity viruses and other microbes may share cross reacting epitopes with the self antigens this is called as molecular mimicry example is rheumatic heart disease microbial infections with tissue breakdown cause this activation of the antigen present as cells in the tissue leading to breakdown of t cell energy so there is infection triggered autoimmunity which generates the immune response against pathogen components causing cross reactivity against self antigens coming to molecular mimicry in rheumatic heart disease what happens is that there is a similarity between streptococcal cell wall antigen and the endogenous antigens in cardiac tissue synovium and cartilage and brain this leads to immunological attack by the host antibodies 
with the manifestations of acute rheumatic fever. Let's discuss a prototype of autoimmune diseases, SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus. Lupus refers to wolf. It is a multi-system autoimmune disease of protein manifestation and variable clinical behavior. Immunologically, the disease is associated with plenty of autoantibodies, classically including anti-nuclear antibodies. It can be acute or insidious in onset. It is chronic, remitting and relapsing febrile illness, affecting the skin, joints, kidney and serosal surfaces with a female predominance of 9 is to 1. There are genetic factors in SLE, familial association, the odds ratio for persons with HLA, DR2, DR3 is 2 to 3. And there is also a genetic deficiency of the classical pathway of complements, especially C1Q, C2, C4, in about 10% of patients with SLD. And UV radiation, cigarette smoking are the environmental factors and sex hormones. It is nine times more common in women. Drugs such as procainamide and hydrolyzine can lead to SLD. So, it uh, basically is a combination of all. There can be genetic abnormalities and susceptibilities with the UV radiations that leads to defective suppressive network leading to a abnormal immune response and autoantibody immune complexes which target the malar areas of the face can lead to lupus nephritis, cause blood vessel damage. So again here we see that the UV radiations cause a defective clearance of apoptosis and this defective clearance of apoptotic bodies becomes a nuclear debris. This activates the BNT cells and leads to engulfment and endocytosis of antigen antibody complexes and total like receptor engagement by nuclear antigens, stimulation of B cells and dendritic cells, stimulation of B cells and T cells by interferons. What are the spectrum of autoantibodies we see in SLE? Anti-nuclear antibodies are of four types. Antibodies to DNA, antibodies to histone, antibodies to non-histone proteins bound to RNA, antibodies to nuclear antigens. So, antibody to double-stranded DNA are diagnostic of SLE and secondary antiphospholipid syndrome is known to occur in patients with SLE. So, this is the DSDNA pattern, then you can find, find the double fluorescence. If this occurs, it is diagnostic of anti DNS DNA. Right? This is the control. Only a single uh, prominence is seen here. And this is how the anti nuclear antibodies appear when they are viewed in immunofluorescent microscopy. So, what is the test? that you will be asking when you have a case of SLE, you will be asking for ANA, anti-nuclear antibody screening. Okay, And that is nothing but the lab will be screening them with a fluorescent microscope. It is a complex topic by itself. We will discuss it in some other video. So what is the mechanism of tissue injury in SLE? Most organ damage in SLE is caused by immune complex deposition type 3 hypersensitivity, which is the antibody complex formation. There are also autoantibodies against red cells, white cells and platelets, leading to their phagocytosis and cytopenias, type 2 hypersensitivity. Antiphospholipid antibodies also occur. So the, it's a multi-system disorder, characterized by the characteristic butterfly rash, and they can also be joint pain, arthritis, pericardial endocarditis can occur, Leibniz Sachs endocarditis, then there is multiple uh, symptoms involving the fingers and toes, ulceration can occur because of poor circulation, you can have pleural inflammation, psychological factors such as fatigue, loss of appetite, low grade fever, photosensitivity rash, all that can occur.
So this is the incidence of the different manifestations of SLD. Most common being hematological and arthritis. So what is LE cell test? This test is based on the principle that ANAs cannot penetrate the intact cell and thus, thus the cell nuclei should be exposed to bind them with the ANAs. The binding of exposed nucleus with the anti-nuclear antibody results in homogeneous mass of nuclear chromatin material which is called LE body or hematoxylin body. Okay, So basically when uh, we have to make a LE cell preparation, we take blood, we churn it with a glass rod with glass beads so that the nuclear material is exposed to the cells and this is engulfed as a homogeneous material. This is a LE cell. It was a crude test. It is nowadays not no longer performed because anti-nuclear antibody tests are available which are more sensitive. The renal manifestations of SLE. Uh, we can look at the WHO classification of SLE and they are uh, the following classes. Minimal or no detectable abnormalities class 1. Mesangial lupus glomerulonephritis class 2. Focal proliferative glomerulonephritis class 3. Diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis class 4. Membranous glomerulonephritis class 5. This is how it would look under uh, immunofluorescence. This is direct immunofluorescence because the tissue is of the patient. Okay, these are the different lesions of lupus nephritis. It can be diffuse proliferative, diffuse deproliferative, focal proliferative. Okay, focal you have a segmental necrosis. Okay, compared to a normal glomerulus. In contrast, they can be in membranous global nephritis. You have wire loop lesions. There is only membrane thickening. This is the skin manifestation of SLE. You can just find the immunofluorescence at the dermal epidermal junction. Malar rash, Lyman sacs, endocarditis, and the, some variants we need to know: chronic discoid lupus erythematosus and subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, drug-induced lupus erythematosus. This is a case of discoid lupus erythematosus, subacute cutaneous lupus, and these are the drugs that lead to lupus: hydrolazine, sulfonamide, procainamide, isoniazide, and dilatin. And antihistone antibodies are commonly seen in drug-induced lupus. What is Jogren's syndrome? It's a clinical pathologic entity characterized by dry eyes, keratoconjunctivitis sicca, dry mouth, xerostomia. And there is immune mediated destruction of lacrimal and salivary gland. Autoantibodies to ribonucleoproteins are present, such as SSA1 and SSB. Case of Jogren syndrome. In scleroderma, there is autoimmune disorder characterized by excessive fibrosis in multiple tissues. Multiple autoantibodies involved, idiopathic with fibrosis. Activation of fibroblasts by cytokines produced by T cell scene leading to endothelial injury and microvascular disease with cutaneous involvement and visceral involvement seen and characteristic mask like face is seen in scleroderma. Let's not forget how Hashimoto thyroiditis also another autoimmune disease characterized by lymphocyte destruction by the T cells resulting in a diffuse enlargement of thyroid. We will discuss it in detail in the thyroid videos. Okay. Polyarthritis nodosa is again a disease, autoimmune in origin, involving the large vessels. So, to summarize, yeah, these are my references. Uh, what I would like to stress is that SLE is a very important topic from the exam point of view, and also clinically, SLE is very important. And you have to understand the concept of autoimmunity. Okay, that is the most important thing to be focused in this lecture. Okay, subsequent lectures we will discuss more about the other organ specific diseases. Okay, when we touch upon thyroid, we'll talk about Hashimoto's. Okay, and in blood vessel chapter, we can talk about pan polyarthritis nodosa. Okay, please like, subscribe, and share this channel. Thank you.